Before this video starts, GG now has a Discord server. Go check its link in the description below. So what went wrong on Venus? I mean the planet on first sight is very similar to the Earth. Venus is about the same size and gravity as the Earth. It has an atmosphere and for hundreds of years we thought there could be life on Venus. Yet despite all of that, Venus' her surface looks like this. With Venus being similar in size and gravity to the Earth and over 80% its mass, you might expect its surface to be more similar to Earth's than, well, this. The air pressure on Venus is 92 times that of the Earth, which is similar to the pressure found on Earth one kilometer below the surface of the ocean and enough to crush most submarines. Same goes for most probes we landed on Venus, they have all been crushed. The temperature rises to 462 degrees Celsius, which is hot enough to melt lead. The air is over 96% carbon dioxide and it rains sulfuric acid. Though it's so hot, the rain evaporates before hitting the ground. What the hell happened here? There's quite a lot of evidence suggesting Venus developed quite like her own Earth in the early solar system. A long time ago, Venus was more temperate and might have even had liquid water oceans. This must have been about 2 or 3 billion years ago, when the sun was younger and had lower luminosity. 3 billion years ago, it was 82% the luminosity it currently has. As stars age, they build up more helium in their outer layers, causing them to become brighter and bigger. The sun is no different and it has gradually increased in her brightness for billions of years and will continue doing so in the future. At some point in the past, the sun's brightness hit a critical point for Venus. The sun became bright enough to warm Venus up, to the point the ocean started to evaporate. Water vapor is an excellent greenhouse gas, and the heating accelerated. Things at this point started to change rapidly for Venus. On Earth, carbon dioxide is absorbed by the oceans. When water with carbon dioxide in it evaporates, it rains down as acid rain. Rocks on Earth absorb the acid rain and deposit the carbon dioxide. Vast quantities of carbon dioxide are deposited in rocks on Earth, and it's all a fragile balance. When the supercontinent Rodinia broke apart, about 800 million years ago, a lot of rocks were exposed on the Earth's surface and absorbed so much carbon dioxide, there wasn't enough left to trap the sun's heat. With this the Earth cooled significantly in a relative short time period, and it was plunged into the snowball Earth area. As the temperature on Venus started to rise, any carbon dioxide dissolved in the water around Venus got released into the atmosphere as the oceans literally boiled away. Carbon dioxide is solutable in water to almost 1.5 grams per liter. If Venus had only half the water of the Earth, this would have amounted to approximately 900 trillion tons of CO2. This thickened the atmosphere significantly. It became so hot that even the carbon dioxide deposits in the rock had bakes out, releasing even more CO2, which heated the planet even further. All these gases made the atmosphere very thick. And because Venus has no magnetic field, the solar wind rages upon the atmosphere and over time strip the lighter molecules away into space. That's why there no longer remains any water on Venus. It's confirmed that the solar wind is stripping oxygen and hydrogen from the Venerian atmosphere, indicating that in the past there were larger quantities of these substances present on Venus. Other evidence for this scenario comes from the extremely high deuterium to hydrogen ratio in the Venusian atmosphere, roughly 150 times that of the Earth. Since the lighter hydrogen would escape from the atmosphere more readily than its heavier isotope deuterium, what I just described here is one of the most catastrophic chain of events that can befall to a planet. It's known as a runaway greenhouse effect. During a runaway greenhouse effect, global warming goes completely out of control. Once a certain temperature is reached, from there on out, a chain reaction begins completely destroying a planet's climate, turning it into one of the most hostile environments we can imagine. This is what happened on Venus. A planet, once not too different from our own, turned into hell over the course of just a few thousand years. Surprisingly, or unsurprisingly if you paid attention, Venus' surface remains solid. This is because the large pressure increases the melting points of chemicals. A puzzling thing about the surface of Venus is that it appears to be very young geologically speaking. Venus is known to be a geologically active planet, with volcanoes and magma eruptions. 
The number of impact craters on Venus is relatively small compared to other planets. Only about 900, the majority of them, haven't been eroded very much, suggesting they aren't very old. As a matter of fact, they appear to be all from around roughly the same age of half a billion years. This all indicates a catastrophic event happened around that time on Venus, resurfacing the planet. Because of the hostile environment of Venus, there have been no seismic measurements of Venus. Little direct information therefore is available about the eternal structure and geochemistry of Venus. What kind of event happened on Venus 500 million years ago remains shrouded in mystery. Today, Venus is often addressed as the closest resemblement of hell we can find. And to realize this place might have once been very much like the Earth really makes us fortunate to have evolved on Earth and not on Venus. But with the sun steadily going on to increase in her brightness, Venus might be what the Earth will look like in just a billion years. Scientists have calculated this turning point for Earth lies at a small increase of 10% in the sun's brightness, which will cause the surface temperature of our world to reach 47 degrees Celsius, our critical point. This will cause the temperature of the Earth to rise rapidly and its oceans to boil away until it becomes a greenhouse planet similar to Venus today. However, the Earth could reach a temperature over twice as high as Venus, as our green planet with all its life has a significantly larger quantity of carbon dioxide than Venus ever could have had. Its calculated temperatures of around 900 degrees Celsius are realistic for our planet. This is hard enough to melt calcium and far past the Drapler point. On the long term, a runaway greenhouse effect on Earth is inevitable. As you can see, the story of Venus is a tragic one. An Earth-like planet ruined by natural disasters through an unfortunate series of events.